Now, let's talk about safety. The company you work for has made a big commitment to safety, really. But you've got to do your part, too. So let's look first at some safety equipment, and then we'll go over some safety procedures. The first thing about safety equipment concerns not what you wear, but what you don't wear. When at work on the rig, remove all your jewelry, like rings and wristwatches. Here's why. Not a pretty sight, is it? We're not trying to make you sit, but you can see that if your ring got caught on something, it could take your finger off, so no jewelry. What do you wear? Your basic outfit is work clothes. You're going to get dirty. That's the nature of the job. But dirty is no excuse for wearing ragged clothes. This person is wearing long pants and a shirt with sleeves. His shirt tail is tucked in. And no big tears or raggedy strips of clothing stick out. His clothing is protecting his skin and nothing hangs or sticks out that could get caught on a piece of turning equipment. And having nothing hanging out that could get caught applies to your cold weather gear, too. And you'll wear personal protective equipment, PPE for short. PPE helps keep you injury free. Basic PPE includes head protection, eye protection, hand protection, and foot protection. And you must have an approved hard hat Approved ones have a label like this inside. The label indicates the hat meets American National Standards Institute, or ANSI, specifications. Notice that it's made out of hard, molded plastic. You shouldn't wear metal hard hats. They conduct electricity. If a metal hard hat ever touched a live wire, you could be zapped. So molded plastic is the way to go. The suspension gives support so that your head doesn't actually touch the sides of the hat. The suspension is vital, so don't alter your hard hat in any way. Otherwise, it won't give you the protection you deserve. In cold weather, you can add a winter liner, a zero hood, to help keep your head and ears warm. This guy has reversed the suspension in his hard hat so that it fits backwards on his head. It may look cool, but this is really dumb. Turning the liner around reduces the protection the hat gives you. If you have long hair, you may have to wear a hairnet. The net keeps your hair from hanging out under your hard hat. It's too easy for loose hair to get caught in a piece of equipment on the rig. Or you may be able to make a ponytail and tuck it in under your hat. The point is, confine your hair so that it can't get caught in anything. Another piece of protective gear you'll be wearing is safety glasses. They can be clear and colorless, or they can be dark to protect your eyes from the sun. They're made of shatterproof plastic. They give side protection, too. Keep in mind that safety glasses alone are not enough when you're doing certain jobs. For instance, this crew member is wearing safety goggles and a face shield. They protect the eyes and face from flying particles. The driller will tell you when you need to wear goggles and shield. You may also have to don a respirator when working in dusty areas or when handling mud components. Such components are like fine powder. You must not breathe them in. An approved respirator filters dust and fine particles out of the air to protect your airway and lungs. For more information about handling mud components and other substances, you can always find the Materials Safety Data Sheet, MSDS, on the rig. The MSDS gives you detailed information about the substances. For instance, the MSDS for this substance indicates that you have to use a respirator to safely handle it. This is a self-contained breathing apparatus. The tank holds about a 30-minute supply of breathable air. Use this gear when entering a confined space or when hydrogen sulfide is in the air. 
you'll be given extensive training in breathing equipment. Remember, a respirator simply filters breathable air. Self-contained breathing equipment provides you with breathable air when there's something in the air that could harm or kill you. Be aware of confined spaces, like an empty fuel tank or any space where air cannot circulate. The driller will tell you more about confined spaces, but the main thing is don't enter a confined space alone and without authorization. What air may be in a confined space may not be safe to breathe. Confined space entry requires careful preparation and the use of proper equipment. If you're working on a location where you may have to put on breathing equipment, you'll have to be clean shaven. Sorry, no beards. Here's why. Facial hair can make it impossible to get a good seal between the face mask and your face. Without a firm seal, poisonous air could enter the mask and harm or kill you. It's important to protect your hearing, too. One way is these plugs. Once in your ear, they expand to make a tight fit. You can still hear, but they stop noise that could permanently damage your hearing. In really noisy areas, like next to the engines, you may have to use earmuffs and earplugs. They pretty much block out all sound. But if it's still too noisy, you may have to limit the time you spend in the area. Usually signs warn you where you have to use hearing protection. And speaking of signs, you'll see several on and around the rig. They remind you of potential hazards and give instructions. Always pay attention to signs and heed what they say. Here is a special sign or tag to be aware of. The crew member has locked out and tagged out a switch that turns on a piece of equipment. It is locked and tagged out to keep someone from mistakenly turning it on while the equipment is being worked on. Never try to turn on anything that is locked and tagged out. It could injure or kill somebody. A good pair of work gloves protect your hands from scratches and cuts. These are orange dot cotton gloves. The little dots or bumps allow you to get a good grip on tools and equipment. You may also wear chemical resistant rubber gloves when you're handling certain mud components. To protect your feet, you'll wear steel-toed boots. Most of what you work and walk on is metal surface, so good quality leather or rubber work boots are a must. Also, they need to be at least ankle high. Under the toe of the boot is a strong steel plate. It protects your toes from being crushed, up to a point, of course. You'll still need to be aware of where your feet are when you're handling heavy stuff. Another feature your boots should have is non-skid soles. The better your boots grip the surface you're standing on, the less likely you are to slip. Notice, too, that they've got a fairly high heel. Heels help you keep your footing on stairs and walkways. And speaking of stairs, when going up and down them, use both hands to grip the handrail. If you're carrying something, make sure you can carry it with one hand. You should always have at least one hand on the handrail to steady yourself. Otherwise, it's easy to slip and fall. What if it's too heavy to carry with one hand? Good question. To lift heavy stuff, an experienced crew member can use an air hoist or tugger. The air hoist allows the crew to pick up heavy stuff and move it. Remember, though, you've got to have experience to use it. A few rigs don't have air hoists. On the rigs that don't have air hoists, crew members use a cat head and cat line to move equipment. A cat head is a rotating spool on the end of the draw works. The crew member spools the cat line onto the cat head. He controls the lift by friction on the line. You really have to know what you're doing to safely use a cat head and a cat line. In fact, everybody has to know what they're doing for any task on the rig. That's why you'll take part in job safety analysis or JSA meetings. They're also called pre-job planning meetings. In such meetings, you discuss the job and go over the steps required to do it right. When everyone involved knows what the job entails and what is expected of them, 
the chances are good it will be done safely and efficiently. For instance, let's say you're assigned to stack sacks of mud materials in the mud house. These sacks are pretty heavy, 50 pounds at least. How do you lift them without hurting your back? In the pre-job or JSA meeting, the driller points out how to properly lift. First, make sure you have firm footing. Keep your feet apart for a stable base. Second, bend your knees. Don't bend at the waist. Third, tighten your stomach muscles. These muscles support your spine. Fourth, lift with your legs. Fifth, keep the load close to your body. And sixth, keep your back straight. Don't twist with the load. Also, when a crew member has to work more than six feet off the ground, some companies say five feet, you'll need fall protection devices. One is a full body harness. The derrick man uses it to climb the derrick. He hooks onto a fall arrestor in the derrick to climb. Here is a riding belt. Anyone working in the derrick dons it before being lifted up to perform the work. A JSA meeting reviews the procedures and equipment needed to work safely at elevated heights. Well, that about wraps it up. We certainly haven't covered everything you'll need to know to make a hand, but you should have a pretty good idea of what to expect. Remember, you'll need an approved hard hat, eye protection, hearing protection, and steel-toed boots with non-skid soles. Your company may furnish some of these items when you start work. Pay attention to the signs on the rig and always follow instructions from the driller. And if you don't know something, ask. The only dumb question is the one you didn't ask.